eight, and it's one reason the pews aren't filled. We need to let our joy be evident. We need to arise and let our light shine. I remember back when I was a young man, and I was still traveling the country, and I traveled through the, the southwest a lot. And I remember traveling through the, the deserts of Texas and New Mexico and Arizona. I had someone with me one time, and we'd driven for hours, and it was dark in the desert. And they said, what's that up there? I said, those are the lights of Amarillo. And it took us an hour to get to those lights that were so far away. And the same thing was said in New Mexico. What, what's that up there? I said, those are the lights of Albuquerque. And we're drawn to those lights. We, we, we aim to those lights. But those lights pale in the desert. When you look up at the night sky at God's lights, and they shine and they twinkle. See, that's the true lights. What is, what is it in our life? And we each, need, each of us needs to answer this question. What, what pale light in our life that we think is so important that is actually covering the light that is supposed to shine through us? Sometimes it's religion. Sometimes it's a, a set of pet beliefs. And those beliefs may be right. But if you hinge your hope just on those beliefs, you can become legalistic. See, God wants a relationship. And in a relationship, we become just like Him. And the more we become like Him, the brighter our lights shine. Amen? Amen. Oh, Pastor, you're, you're just like your dad. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Because I had a great dad. But when people would come to me and say, Pastor, I mean this. I really saw Jesus in you today. And I've got to get on my knees and say, praise the Lord. Because His light shined through my life. The multitude of camels. And it speaks about things coming and it says, they shall proclaim the praises of the Lord. You know, hurting and scared people are hurting and scared because they have no hope. And you've got friends and family out there that I call them hand ringers. Oh, Pastor, you don't know. Oh, it's, you just don't know the bills I got. And, oh, you know, and the, the family, they're never going to come together. And, oh, man. And you know what? You've worried yourself into a heart attack. You've worried yourself into bad health. All about things you've got no control over. You know, our light needs to draw people to the light of the world. And the light of the world is Jesus. We're to do that by bringing in, it says in verse 6, they shall proclaim the praises of the Lord. The good news, the light we had is the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. They need to see genuine praise in us. How can we inspire other people to praise God when they don't see praise in us? How can we inspire other people to get excited for the Lord when they see no excitement in us? Sometimes all they see in the Christian church is finger wagging. Don't do this. Now, I've told you, that's not what a good Christian does. But you know what? We look at the outward appearance, but God looks to his light in our heart. Amen. Is his Holy Spirit there? Is, does his son reside in your heart? Does he have control of the real desires of your heart? If he does, you're going to make the decisions that are honoring to him. You're not going to make the same decisions I do because you're not me. God doesn't want clones. He wants faithful people. Amen. <coughs> and he's going to lead each one of us down a different path. Sometimes our praise is the, the shine in our light. You know, it's what makes this, it's what makes the dull light a bright light. Our praise. Let's not talk a good game in the church. Let's live out a life of praise and worship. Let's Amen. arise and shine for real that other people can see and are drawn to us. We need to have something of substance, of reality to give to them. Something that we truly believe and not something we've made up and memorized. Rise and shine because God has broke through the darkness and he set us free. You see, Jesus is our hope. Jesus does not give us hope. 
if it's something He gives us, we need to work and strive and learn to, to get it. He is our hope. When we have Jesus, we have the hope of God. We have the hope of the kingdom of God in our hearts. And that light will shine through. Our hope is not the world. But our hope is Jesus the Nazarene. Amen. 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 Jesus gives us this order in Matthew chapter 5. You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same manner, let your light shine before men that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven forever. That's how people are inspired to live a godly life. By seeing you live a godly life before them. Not telling them about it. Having them watch you and be so drawn to the light that shines through you that they say, I want some of that. I, I'm not sure what it is. I want it in my life. I need that in my life. I'm tired of being sick and tired. And I need hope. And that's when we share the gospel with them. Many of us are content being a flashlight. We can turn it off, turn it on. Go to church, turn it on. Go home, turn it off. Go out Friday night, turn it off. See somebody from the church in the store, turn it on. That's a phony. We need to quit being flashlights. Let the light of the world shine through you. Let everybody see Jesus in you. All that over a breakfast. Amen. Isn't it amazing? Can we, are we capable of the challenge to <clears throat> rise and shine as a church? I know we are. It better be. Because whom God calls, he equips. He does not, he does not call the equipped because none of us are equipped. But when we say yes to God, he says, now I can work through you and work with you and work in you draw more people to me. Go ye therefore in all the world and make disciples of the nations. And we need a light to do that. Will you bow your heads please? Father, we thank you for the, the message you've given us. We thank you for the truths, Lord, that you've hidden all through your scriptures. If, if it were possible for a good pastor to live a thousand years, he could never plumb the depth of your word. There was so much truth in it. We thank you, Lord, that you've loved us enough to, to give us bits and pieces every time we come together. So we praise you today. We say, Lord God, let your light shine. Help us to, to lift the blinds up and open the curtains and let a world look in. What a holy, sanctified heart looks like. And let your face shine out through them, that they may be drawn to you. So we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Will you stand with me, please? Pastor, would you close us and pray?